Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about randomization in Reaper. Now, this isn't something that can happen straight away with Reaper, so as prerequisites, you need to make sure that you have the Repack extensions. And here you can see with the small i are the scripts that I have already installed. And I'm going to break down how I've used them to build some ambiences of bird sound. So I have an animation here and there's a guy working on a spacecraft on an alien planet and all of the regular ambiences that I have didn't necessarily fit what we're trying to do. Now one thing I've noticed with a lot of bird recordings that you can get in libraries is that there's a lot of extra noise in there that you don't necessarily want. So rather than using a pre-made ambience, I was going to make my own from scratch. And to simulate bird sound, I essentially just whistled into my microphone and sped things up and applied high pass filters to make sure there was nothing underneath. And I ended up with 27 different sounds, which I'll play for you now, so you can have a listen. And what I ended up with, with using these scripts that I installed, is I end up with a huge amount of randomization, and I have this set so that I can stack areas on top of each other. So I'll hit play, and you can hear what the fin finished result is, and I'll go through the process with you. So essentially what I have done is I'll go into my show actions list and I'll type in random here and I made my own custom action out of a few things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and edit so we can see what I've done. So selected takes in selected items shuffled at random. Now this one is quite important and you can see here the difference between lots of different items and having them all stacked in takes. So I have all of my items and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make sure that I have a lock and I am going to set this to ripple editing. And I'm just going to find a random bar here and I'm going to start dragging these all in on top of each other. And it looks like they're disappearing or stacking on top of each other, but don't worry, they are still all there. Okay, so now they're all in one place. When I play it, they all play at once. And that isn't what we want. We want to be able to only pick one of them. And then if we wanted to, we can stack different things. I guess one thing I should mention to make sure that these aren't just folding over on top of each other and applying crossfades, I have these two. Um, show all takes in lanes when there's room. Show overlapping media items in lanes. So that means that I can see all of the media there. And I make sure that I don't have auto crossfade when editing. Because otherwise you would start seeing crossfades happen as you start dragging them on top of each other because Reaper's going to try and only pick one sample. With all of these options set like this, it means that they all play together as if they were on a bunch of different tracks. So I'll select all of these right click, go to take, and then I have implode items on same track into takes. So now when I play, we only get one sound. We have select takes in selected items. So I'm gonna do a search for that. So then we're gonna run this. And you can see it's selecting one random take. So if I were to create multiples of this and I can hit run, and you can see we have random takes. So then the next script that I have is one that adjusts the volume randomly. So I can hit run on this. And this one actually gives us a GUI. So I can hit randomize and I can see where the volume is changing and I can push it either up in volume or down in volume or have it near the middle. Um, this is how wide the volume randomization is gonna be. So if you want it to be a small amount of randomization, you put it closer to the bottom. If you don't mind, then you can run it all the way to the edge and you can see how this one is jumping all around. I'm just gonna hit apply here so you can see how it changes. You can see now I have plus 7.59 dB, hit, hit randomize again, move it somewhere else, hit apply. We now get minus 4.07. And if I select a, a whole bunch of these, 
hit randomize. Now you can see that it has all four items and where they're moving. You can hit randomize a few times, hit apply, and now you can see that this one's like minus 0.61 dB plus 5.9 dB. You get the idea. Next script is randomize active takes pitch in selected items. This one doesn't come with a GUI, so I'm going to close this. And this one is essentially just taking the pitch and it's nudging it, I think, up to a semitone, either plus or minus. So you can see how these are moving around. Now, if you wanted to change the range of these, you can go to Edit, Sublime Text, or whichever text editor you use. And you can just fudge around with these numbers. I'm not a coder. I don't know exactly which one is the best one to change here. But I find that if I change this number, which I think is originally 15, and you save this, and then let's run the script again. You can see what difference it makes. This should be wildly different now. Okay, so now you can see it's going up to plus 2.24. And this one is plus 2, minus 0 0.6, minus 1.13. And you're, you're essentially getting a wider range of randomization. I'm going to put this back to 15. I don't like a huge amount of randomization. I like that little bit of control that I have. I'm going to hit run and look, we're back within one semitone. Next on my list is randomize my active takes pan. Independent of this pan here, the takes or the items also have a pan as well. So this is the next action that I run and this gives me a random spread. So I'm going to hit run. And I'm going to play this, and you should hear the pan moving between left and right, if everything went well. So you're getting some randomization on the spread. So essentially what's happening, and what gave me the idea for this, is this program called Sound Particles. Now Sound Particles is a lot more in-depth, and it's a lot better at doing what I'm emulating here than the script in Reaper. This is essentially a particle engine that will help you throw things around. So if I go to new, you can see um, a few examples. What it does is it creates like visual effects, particles out of a sample that you give it and it creates movement and alternates where it's listening to the audio file and the pitch that it's listening to. And you have a huge amount of control as to the distribution of all of that information. Now, you can get stuff like flybys. So let's find like a bouncing ball. I'll play the original. And we'll play the template. And you're getting some Doppler effects as well. Um, now, in terms of building ambiences like I am, this emitter is fine so what i will do is i will grab all of those bird noises that i had originally and now you can hear them in here so you're essentially getting the same thing let's make this a duration of like five seconds let's do like two particles a second i'm gonna hit play and it's gonna render Now, it's not creating that much variation between the times. Now, I can endlessly play with this. It's still kind of rhythmic sounding, and I, it doesn't sound super random. And I can go into the azimuth, and we can change the distribution of it. And there's a, a bunch of different settings here that you can set to like the probability of it starting like rhythmically or kind of breaking it up a little bit more. Um, I don't want to go into that because I'm not actually using this, so I'm just going to hit cancel and I'm just going to render this again and we'll listen to the two different uh, methods. So now that I've created my sound particles render, I've just put it down here, so let's just name this track sound particles. I now have a difference between the bird noise. Let's kill the video for now. And you can have a listen to the bird noise that I've made with the randomization scripts in Reaper. And all I've done is I've basically just taken this and I've copy and pasted it and I've moved things around and I've just kind of made things a little bit more random. Let me take this off. And then you can kind of see how things move around. 
Let's take ripple edit back off again. And then I can just, you know, figure out what density I want. And if I decide that, oh, it's too dense, let's just delete 50% of them, make it a little bit less. And I can just play this. And with the fact that I've built a custom action out of all of those scripts, I can just hit my uh, randomizer here. And you can see that I have a volume randomizer that comes up, make things louder or quieter if I want to. Hit randomize again, apply. And you can see I have different takes. Things are going to be panned differently. And they all have different volumes now. Which is cool. And then the Sound Particles version. Does a similar kind of thing. It's a lot more frequent than it's a lot more frequent than my one. So I'll tell you what, let's crush these in a little bit. Let's make it a bit more fair in terms of comparison. Now the benefit of doing it in Reaper is that it's free and Sound Particles is an external program. Cool. You can you can visually see what you're doing in Reaper, but with Sound Particles you have to have a bit more knowledge as to how the randomization works. Because it's super rhythmic, it's almost like musical, and that isn't really what I want with an ambience. And then to cap off the whole thing, I have a... I'm using a couple of plugins, proximity, just to make them seem a little bit more distant, so I'll just show you what's happening there. Let's, uh, let's play before. Proximity just helps add the perception of distance. I find it quite subtle, but I like what it does. A lot of what it does is reduce the high end and low end. And then I have this Altiverb Forest sound. I don't believe I was using our verb. I was just comparing the two when I had that on. That's quite frequent. We can remove how frequent it is. But now I can just 